Imagine taking any photo and transforming it in seconds, removing objects, extending backgrounds, or even adding entirely new elements with just a few words. Sounds like science fiction, right? Well, with Adobe Firefly's generative fill, the power is now in your hands. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Dave Basulto, an award-winning media arts instructor and Apple learning coach. If you're an educator or just someone creative looking to teach or learn with intelligence, you're in the right place. This channel is all about leveraging AI and cutting edge tools to enhance storytelling, creativity, and the way we teach. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to master Adobe Firefly's generative fill, one of the most powerful AI tools for photo editing. Whether you wanna remove distractions, expand backgrounds, or create entirely new elements with just a prompt, Firefly makes it fast, fun, and easy. So if that sounds exciting, hit that like button, subscribe, and follow us for more AI creative workflows. Let's dive in and unlock the future of digital editing. So we're in Adobe Firefly, and if you don't have it, you can go to firefly.adobe.com. They have several different plans, it's very inexpensive. And if you are on the Adobe plans for your school or school district, you have access to this. So have fun with it. So we're going to go over here into image and then inside of image, there's text to image, which we've done a tutorial on already. If you haven't seen it, there's the link. And today we're going to go into generative fill. It's a, I just showed some kids the other day and they were just like, Pew! so let's go in here. Once we click in, you'll see that there's some examples. If you hover over them, you'll see what people have done to fix things. So for example, the fish here was just a fish. They added all these different elements to it. Here is a uh, lighthouse. They added waves and they added all kinds of fun things to it. So we're gonna do our own here. So I'm gonna upload this image and we're gonna go to my desktop and we're gonna go into Firefly. And I think we'll start out with this one here. This is pretty cool. This is actually an AI image I generated with Firefly for a video tutorial I was working on before. So in this image, you see the two people helping each other right there. Then you see someone's hand down below, which is right here, which I don't really care for. It's nice to have this person in the background, but maybe you want to get rid of that person too. So there's all kinds of things here going on that maybe I want to change in my image because I really want to focus on the two people that are right there. So the first thing I'm going to do is over on the left, you've got three different tools. You've got the insert tool, the remove tool, the expand tool. The pan down here just gives you a hand so you can move your image around. So I'm going to go back to the remove tool. And down here I can add, subtract, do all kinds of fun things, change my brush size, all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to start first with this person, this person's hand right here. It's kind of bothering me. So I'm going to go here and just start to draw around it and real simple. And, and to be quite honest, you don't have to be 100% accurate. Just close enough really works with this tool. And I want to make sure I've got everything out of there. And then I'm just going to hit remove. And in a few seconds, it's going to change and get rid of that hand. And let's see if it does a good job with it. There you go. All right. So we got rid of the hand. So down here, you'll get three different options. You can also press more if you want more. Maybe you don't like them, but I'll just go through them. Here's the first one. I actually like the second one a little better. Let's see the third one. Uh, I'm going to go with the second one. looks more like the colorization. She's got a little mark here, but maybe she has a scar from doing something. And uh, so I'm going to leave that one alone. So I've cleaned that up right away. I'm not distracted by someone else's hand there. I just see these people working. Next thing I'm going to do is press keep because I want to keep that. Now I'm going to go over to the left here and we're still in the remove tool. So I'm going to unfortunately remove this young lady from stardom here. She's no longer going to be a part of my image. And boy, could I have used this growing up in school and gotten rid of all kinds of people and pictures that I didn't want to have. <laughs> uh, there we go. Let's remove again. We're spinning around. What's it going to look like? It's usually just such a great job. But you see how it does this in seconds. And doing this in Photoshop in the old days, first you had to teach the kids how to use Photoshop, and then much less using it. Now, look at that. Totally looks good here. Look at this. This, this is a nice and crisp line there. 
This is, they extended these cabinets here. This looks fantastic. Let's look at the other two really quick. I don't like that one very much, although they cut this here and added this like against the wall, but I don't, it doesn't really work for me. That one's okay. It's got an empty thing there. What was the difference between the first two? I like this one has books. It's kind of consistent. So we're going to keep that one too. So right away, I've got everything that I need that I'm looking for in this shot. I can now put some text over here later in something like Canva or whatever. Maybe this is going to be a thumbnail for a video I did. But you know what? I'm going to insert something. So I'm going to click the insert button and I'm going to go up here on the wall. Let me see, let me move my mouse a little bit. And I'm gonna to start to draw right here. Don't wanna to get too much. Then down here where it says prompt, I'm going to say add a school, what was it? sorry, school clock. Because we wanna know what time it is all the time. So I'm gonna hit generate. And it's starting to go around and figure out what kind of school clock and is it going to look there. So there you go. It's added the school clock. It's blurry like it should be with the rest of the stuff. Maybe that's not the right clock. Let's go to the second one. I don't know. That looks interesting, but that's not really what I wanted. And here's a clock that could work for me. I might hit more to generate some more this time and see what I can get from that. And let's see which kind of clocks it comes up with this time. Uh, that looks kind of playful. That looks too not good. And that's not good either. We'll see a few more. And I can always go back to my other clocks here, as you can see. I've got the option to go back to those. Let's go back to, where's the one that, there, there we go. I mean, that one kind of works. But let's see what else it just made. So let's see, made this green thing. This blue clock could work. That's kind of a clock too, that could work. I'm gonna go back to one. And you can just keep tweaking these all the time. That's the lovely thing about using this app. So that actually fits in with it. It looks like it's four or something, four ten. So I'm gonna keep that as well. And once I'm done with that, I can now just be done and click download right here. I like it, so it's working good. So that's gonna be my first thing that I've done for the day. All right, let's go back to generative fill. Let's upload an image here. I just tried to download an image of Yosemite because the kids just went there. So here's a nice image. And you find a lot of kids that are filming, shooting photos vertically all the time because they're so used to TikToks and whatnot. But I really want widescreen. I want to see a panoramic view of beautiful places, not some, you know, vertical thing. So for this particular one, I'm going to go down here where it says expand. We'll hit that once and then we're going to go over here where I've got options from free form so I can scale it around whatever I want to do. I can uh, do a square image. I can do a landscape, portrait view, etc. I want this to be widescreen. So now I want the AI to go, okay, that's my base shot. What could possibly be around it? And we're just going to hit generate here. And now it's going to look around and figure out what should be there. And let's see if it does a great job of it. It usually does. And I'm really excited about this one. There you go. So is that Yosemite? I don't know. It's supposed to be. Um, I haven't been there in years, so I can't remember everything about it. But it looks pretty good. It definitely looks like we're up in the mountains somewhere. I mean, it brought in all these trees. Um, here's some trees that are closer to us for give us some depth. The rocks look really good here. If you look around here, the rocks look nice. And uh, so I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm sitting back here, and maybe I should have gone over to the right more as I was shooting this photo if I was the photographer so I can get more of the, of the lake or whatever down there. So I'm going to go over here and do remove. And this is what's great about the program. It says, do you want to leave or stay? So uh, you could have just clicked, and it could have erased everything you did. So you want to stay, and then you want to press keep. Okay, so now I'm going to do my remove tool. And this tree right here has got to go. It's a little bit in my way, and I want to see more of what is, um, is down there. See if it'll bring in some more of the water there. So I'm just going to do a nice little, a nice little erasing of this. Here's some more right here. And we'll just leave that. Let's leave that alone, and let's see if it fixes that. I'll click remove and let's see how it makes this picture. Now that, if it gets rid of that, it's going to be nice and wide and I can now see down there and see the, 
beautiful river, lake, whatever that is. And there you go. Looks great here. If you look here, it, I don't see any weird edges. They moved the trees over, added new trees down here. This looks fantastic, but something's missing here. So I'm going to hit in. Oh, once again, it told me to, to stay or leave. So I'm going to stay. And this is built for me because I forget to do this all the time. I'm going to click, uh, click on keep. So now I've got all this ready to go. Now I'm going to go here and do insert. And right about here, let's go right here. And I'm going to make this kind of a decent size. Let's see. Maybe like that. Maybe there's a little more this way. And I'm going to do that for now. And I'm going to type in here an eagle. An eagle sits on the rock looking out. And we'll generate that because I thought this is beautiful and I kind of want a bird there, an eagle. I could have put a coyote, whatever. <laughs> so there's my eagle there. It's looking a little small, but I'm okay with that for now. And I can go, that's a little bit bigger, but that looks like a weird seagull eagle. And that one's a little bit better. So I'm just going to leave this one. Maybe that's a baby eagle or something. And I just happen to be further back and I got this great shot. So this looks really good to me. I'm going to keep that as well. And now I'm ready to go download this and use this image for, you know, whatever I want to use it for. So love, love, love generative fill. Let's do one more. I will take this one here. So this is a, an image I used for a TikTok about AI that I did. And uh, there you go. You know, it looks nice and everything. But what if I wanted to expand this? So I'm just going to hit expand one time. And we'll do this one as a widescreen. And let's see if it picks up all the nuances that are going on there. There's people there. What's, what else is inside of this room with computers and everything like that? And I think it's going to do another good job because it does. I like that. I'm not sure if I like this empty space on the right, but it did good on the left here. Let's look at this one. That looks horrible. I'm not really into that one. Let's do a few more. See what it comes up with. But it usually does really nice. It figures out what the room looks like and all that stuff. So it's just great for, I mean, this one's not horrible. Got some paneling and stuff there. There we go. That's more of what I was looking for, where there's all kinds of things going that way. You got the computer screens along the back wall. This one does not fit for me at all. And you can just keep going and going and testing and changing your prompts, you know, really detailing what you want in this scene to happen. So I love, I love, I love Adobe Firefly. Check it out when you have a chance. I hope this tutorial helped you to get some inspirational ideas and that you'll go and try these on your own. I'm Dave Basulto. If you like this stuff, please hit a like and a subscribe on my channel. I'm trying to teach people with intelligence. I'll see you guys in the next video.